Throughout this video, we're going to investigate how to integrate an Arduino MKR Wide Area Network 1310 into ThinkStack. And the instructions are quite good. There was a couple of bits where it wasn't quite clear, hence why I'm recording this video. But if you go into your search engine and just type in MKR1 1310 space TTN, which is the Things Industry Network, whatever you want to call it, you can see here, the, it will take you through to this help screen. And you need this version of hardware. There is a 1300, but that's what, this is the one we're working with. So an Arduino 1310, which looks like this. Sorry to jump around. It will come with an antenna that you can fit onto a micro SMB or SMA connector here. And these connections allow you to, to wire in some sensors. Now we're not going to do anything like that for this video. We're going to power it off a, a USB, but you do have the option to power it off a battery as well. If you go to the Arduino web page and just type in arduino.cc, you can find the software downloads. Now, I haven't got around to upgrading mine, but you can see here these downloads are all available. And as far as I'm aware, they're still free. There, There is a, a web version. I haven't started using that yet. It's it's a slightly different platform, and I, I wasn't quite comfortable with it for this video. Uh, I'm still in old man mode. I'm on, on this legacy version, 1.8. But for what we're going to do, it should work on, on this latest version as well. When you have the Arduino software installed, the the first thing that um, you need to do is download the boards. There's a little thing that's probably worth doing as well. If you go into your file preferences, I use the ESP32 uh, package quite a lot. So you want to put in here the board manager URL. So this is quite important. So make sure that you've got this pasted into to your preferences. And then what we can do is if you go to tools, you can see here boards and then go to board manager. And when you're in your board manager, the MKR, you can try typing it in. You can see here, so I've typed in MKR. This is what it's actually looking for, Arduino SAM D boards. I've already got it installed, but if you install this, it should install the drivers and everything else that it needs for the board. So you need that in there to start off with. And then once you've got that installed, you can go back to your tools, your board manager, and you can select the right board. Yeah, so if I go to my SAM, I can see here the MKR11310. So there's all different modules, but this is the one we're working on for LoRaWAN. So first of all, uh, install that. And then what's quite nice is Arduino have a lot of example programs to get you up and running. So that's the next thing that we, we need to look at. And it's under your libraries. So we go to manage libraries. And again, in your search, type MKR1. You can see here MKR1 has come up, the version. There's a, I installed this version 2. You can see here provides APIs. I, I haven't used that for the, for the example you're going to see now. I've just used this one. But I've inst installed version 2. I'll, I'll look at that on a future video. So just install both of them for now. And then what you'll see is if you go to your file, examples, and then just scroll down, you can see I've got quite a few here, MKR1, and the first one to do is the software update standalone. So with your board plugged in and everything installed, go to this software update program and then just click on this compile and run. I like to have the serial monitor 
on the screen so I can see what's happening. And I can see here now, look, with the serial monitor open, that um, everything's working fine. You can see here the, the default settings for the programs. So the, the default board rate, new line feeds. You can put on here a timestamp as well. That's So if I turn that off, you can see here the timestamp has gone off, but I have that on for, for a reason. Flashing OK and my unit now has been upgraded. So let's take a look at the sketches that we can use to connect to the thing stack. So if we come down, again MKR, first configuration, LoRa, send and receive. That's one I'm using at the moment. If we go to first configuration, let's have a look at this first configuration sketch. So my first configuration sketch is is open. I'm going to download that and then I can see here it's asking me how I want to connect to the thing snow. I can see just above that my device EUI. Over the air authentication is the most secure method for, for LoRaWAN. So let's do one on that and then let's see. Please enter your app EUI. Now this is where I got a little bit lost because of this terminology. So I'm going to hold that there now and we're going to have a look at the, the Things Stack app and what data we need from that to be able to, to, to join this device. So here I have the Things Stack open. I already have an application set up and I have a couple of devices registered on this and I've covered setting up a, an application server on a, on a previous video. So what I want to do now is register a new device. So if I click on register a new device, this is where it's quite good with the thing stack. I just look for Arduino and then there's the model that I've got. Keep it at this hardware version and then I've just upgraded to the latest firmware. So there we have it. And then my region is EU. Frequency plan, again, EU. And now this is where the confusion started for me because this join EUI code is the new terminology. Now, if I put my mouse over here, you will see here app EU, formerly called app EUI. So the app EUI in this case, we're just going to make it all zeros. And I'm going to copy that, I'll confirm it, and I'm going to go back to my Arduino. I left it in this state, look. And I'm going to put my zeros up here and hit enter to confirm that. Then it's asking for my app key. And my app key is down here, so I can generate that. But this device EUI code, if I go back to my terminal, is here. So I can copy that code and then I can paste that into here. So the only bit I need to add now is this application key. And I will cut, copy this. And I will add that to this program, hit return. This code now is trying to find that device on ThingStack, but I haven't finished the registration off. So I will let this go through and it's come up, going, to, going to come up with an error code. I got a little bit trigger happy with my mouse and I clicked on register device. So I didn't get to show you the error message. And this is the reason I put the timestamp on, on my serial monitor. I can see here that um, I've had a confirmation on my Arduino that the message has been sent correctly. And then if I look on things stack from my device, I can see here the device EUI. And there's my device EUI. I, c I could have changed that to something else that made more sense. But um, I've left it as it is for default. And I can see here you know, my join request has been accepted. The error message you would have got, I'm just going to put it up. If you go back to the help, it actually tells you. It's not going to say uh, exactly what the error is. All it knows is for some reason it can't connect to the thing stack. So it could be, for all it knows, a signal quality issue. It can't connect to the gateway. It's, it's a basic program, don't forget. So there we have this connection, which is good, but it doesn't do anything else. There's another example within the Arduino sketches that allows you to start sending data. 
to the thing stack and that's what we're going to look at next. So this is the program or the sketch that I'm running at the moment, first configuration. If I go to my file, examples, and then just scroll all the way back down to my MKR, you'll see one here that says LoRa send and receive. So let's open that one up. Now just be careful because it doesn't close your other sketch down, so you can have multiple sketches open at the same time, which is good. So you can multitask, you can cut and paste bits of code from one to the other. I don't want to confuse myself, so I've closed that. And now I have the send and receive Arduino program here. It doesn't ask you for the details. It uses over-the-air authentication, you can see here. Okay? And we have our details on, on this screen. So this is the thing stack open with my device. I've already registered it, don't forget. So I need this code here. And I'll put that into my app UI. Don't start changing these descriptions because you've defined them. So just leave it as app UI. It sort of lines up more neatly with 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 this now. So We've already registered, but if you were registering this again, don't forget it, it refers to it as a join EUI during the, the, the first setup phase. The device EUI, don't have to worry about that's on the device, so it's just this app EUI, so I'll copy that, and then I can paste that into to it. And I can see here my join information, there's my code, so again, I will compile this and download it. So you compile in the sketch. I now need to use a serial monitor. I can see here my device UI, and when it's connected, I'll have a message here to say connected, and I can send a message. So you can see here something went wrong. So I do get to show you the error message. The reason is I've got a mismatch. And if you can just see here, look, I've accidentally put some spaces in my app EUI, so I will compile that and download it again. So this is where it gets quite nice. So if I go back to my thing stack and look at live data, and if I want, I can clear this screen in anticipation. I get my terminal ready. I can type in anything I want here and hit return. You can see it's converting it to a hexadecimal value and it's now receiving that hexadecimal value. What I need to do is I need to unpack that message. And that's achieved using the payload formatters. Now if I go to the payload formatter, it's using a bit of an example code, which is looking at the LED status, but that's not what I'm doing with this code. I'm doing something else. I'm sending process value or text what do I need to do? Well, I need to change this to custom JavaScript. And luckily, if I go back to my Arduino example, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you will see here a payload formatter example. So I can copy that. And if I go back into here, I'll put that into my payload formatter and I'll save the changes. Now what I can do is I can jump around, I can test that. So if I go back to my live data, copy this, we know that I was sending test. So I can come back to my payload formatter, paste that into there, hit return, and I can see my payload equals test. So now I'm I'm formatting the data so I can understand what it's um, sending. So let's have a look at that now. When I go back to my live data, I'll clear. I'll get my uh, Arduino uh, serial monitor on the go. I'll type in test now, hit return, and you can see here payload test. And I can type in a number, and I can see the number appearing here in my payload. Now you can send messages the other way as well. I haven't quite got my head 
around how to, to do that. But this is a good start. Now I am manually sending data. I can start looking at adding sensors and pushing data to the cloud at, at regular intervals, ensuring that I comply with the fair use policies for my region. I hope you found that useful. Our first look at Arduino. We haven't done anything other than use the example sketches, but it's a good start using wireless LoRaWAN communication. As per usual, if you like what you see, don't forget to hit the like button. Please share this with your friends and colleagues. But for now, thanks for listening and hope to see you again soon.